Well, salutations, saints. Good to see your faces this morning. How many are thankful for somewhat fun announcements? They hold my attention a little bit better. Hey, uh, for those joining online, I just want to say welcome. Uh, We have people, whether you realize it or not, that join in all across the world to watch New Hope. So I want to give a shout out to the Blessments who have been tuning in from South Africa and to my buddy James Crosby who said he'd be tuning in from Florida. Shout out. You better be watching. I'm going to ask you later and quiz you on my sermon. But uh, we have a volunteer live stream team and uh, they come in week in and week out. And can we just put our hands together and just appreciation for the services. Thank you guys. Switchers, sound people, camera operators. If that's something that you'd like to get involved with, I've tried to, um, I I kind of oversee that a little bit and help with that, and it'd be about a once a month commitment. I'd love to get you plugged in, but we are so appreciative of of that service, and we're glad that you're joining us online. We're wrapping up our Mighty Move of God series, and this morning I'm going to be talking to you about intercession. Now, I might say some things that shock you. But how many know that it's important to allow the Word of God to shape our thoughts and our beliefs about a topic such as intercession rather than allowing someone's opinion or preconceived ideas to shape uh, those thoughts? So my goal this morning is that you would leave with a fuller understanding of what intercession is. But before we go any further, let me just pray and ask Holy Spirit to quicken this word uh, to our hearts. And would you stand with me as, as uh, we pray? We've been sitting a long time. Lord, thank you for your spirit that is with us, that's in us and speaking to us. I pray, God, that you would flow through me and that you would allow me to communicate the way that um, you would want me to communicate. And just speak to our hearts, open our hearts, our ears, our minds, and our, our um eyes to what you have to say and and show us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay standing. We're going to read in our scriptures, Romans chapter 8. Grab your Bible. uh, Turn there. That's where we're going to be uh, um, kind of camping out here this morning. I believe that everyone is called to intercessory prayer, okay? It doesn't matter your age, your maturity, your gender, your attention span, I truly believe that every one of you is called to intercessory prayer. Now, before we, uh, or before you amen me or before you ho-hum me, let's look to the text and see um, what exactly intercession is by examining scripture. So Romans 8, looking in verse 34, reading, following along in your Bibles or on the screens, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, and more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. You can find your seats. Okay? Where is Jesus at? He's where? At the right hand of God. And what is he doing? He is interceding for us. The first point I want you to see this morning is that Jesus is interceding. Now, the Greek verb for interceding is in the present active indicative form. The present active indicative form. Some of you are looking at me with glossy eyes and thinking, what in the world does that mean? What that means is that this word was viewed as a continuous action. Jesus intercessing is a continual act. It's an ongoing act. It's something that is going on continually. Now, don't answer this question out loud. Okay, just answer this in your brain. Nobody answer this out loud. But what does it mean when Scripture says that Jesus is interceding for us? Does that mean that Jesus is continually praying for us? Does it mean that 24 hours a day he's sitting at the right hand of God and he's just, he's praying for us, for you and for me? Now, don't answer that out loud. Just think about it. Now, I want to talk to parents. I want to talk to alert and awake parents, okay? Uh, Any alert and awake parents? If if you're not a parent or it's been a while since you've been a parent, the reason why I clarify alert and awake is because when you drop your kids off, it's like a mental break. And it's really easy just to turn the switch off and just like, oh, I don't have kids, right, in this this moment. And I don't know about you parents, um, but my kids can talk and talk and talk, and talk some more. And quite honestly, between Elizabeth and I, they get it pretty honestly. 
Um, and, and so when they don't think that they have my attention or, or my wife's attention, they get louder and louder and louder. And they can just talk and talk and talk. So let me, let me rephrase this question to you. Do you think that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God just yakking away 24-7? Okay, don't answer that. Uh, for us to truly understand what intercession is, we need to do three things. We need to look at the context, we need to look at the original language, which we did a little bit earlier, and then we need to look and compare different scriptures throughout the Bible so that the conclusions that we draw, we can ensure that it lines up uh, holistically. Because we use scripture to prove scripture. We have to test it with scripture so we're not drawing um, wrong conclusions, right? So we need to look at the context, the language, and then compare verses to understand what intercession is and what this verse in 834 means. So let's back up a little bit in our main portion, Romans 8, if you're still there or follow along on the screens, starting in verse 31, looking at the context. What then shall we say in response to these things? Now, what things is Paul talking about? What things? Okay, in the previous verses, it talks about us becoming heirs. It talks about the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf. It talks about Jesus calling us. It talks about Jesus justifying us, meaning making us just as if we had never sinned. Because these are the things that Paul is asking about. So looking at our text 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all these things? So this is talking about what Jesus did in order for us to be in a restored and a right relationship with God. He's saying God has, has given us Jesus so that we can be in it. How would he not give us the Holy Spirit? How would he not give us um, and make us become heirs, right? So verse 33, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Why? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. In looking at this chapter, in looking at the context and where this verse sits, we see that the major theme is about what Christ has done for us. It's about what Jesus Christ did on the, work, uh, on the cross and the work of the cross and how it affects our lives. Everyone agree with that? You're still with me? Okay, so why are we heirs? Because of Jesus. Why do we now have the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf? Because Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to intercede on our behalf. Why and how are we justified? Through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The context is about what Christ has done and how it impacts us. So we looked earlier a little bit about the original language in the Greek, but what about intercession in the Old Testament, okay? The Hebrew word for intercession is used 46 times in the Old Testament, and that word is paga. Turn to your neighbor and say paga, okay? P-A-G-A. -A. Um, of the 46 times paga is used, only a few times is paga translated as intercede, intercessor, or intercession? The actual definition of intercession is to bring two parties together, to join two things together, to bring two persons together. We have an English word that is very similar to the word intercession. It's intersection, right? Intersection. What is an intersection? It's where two roads meet together. It's where two roads join together. Intercession is the act of bringing two parties or two people or two things together. So let me show you a couple of examples of intercession in the Old Testament. Turn to Joshua 17 verse 10 or you can follow along on the screens. Southward it was Ephraim's and northward, it was Manasseh's, and the sea is his border. And now I want you to take note of these next three words. It says, and they met together. 
They paga. Or they met together in Asher, in Asher on the north and in Issachar on the east. They met together is the Hebrew word for intercession. Paga. If you have an NIV or NASB translation, the word is reached. And this is talking about land. Borders coming together. They met together is the same word in the Hebrew as intercession. How about another one? Joshua 19, 11 says, and their border went up toward the sea and hard word and reached to harder word and reached to the river that is before hardest word, okay? Just kidding. In, in Bible school, uh, they actually just tell you, if you don't know how to pronounce something, say it confidently and quickly and keep on moving and nobody will bat an eye. I know how to say those words and those cities, no problem, okay? It's Marla, Yabba Dabba Doeth, and Jakeem the Dream, okay? That's, that's how it is. So in this text, in Joshua 19.11, the word reached is the Hebrew word for intercession. Marla met together, it reached with Dabasheth. Now this is the amazing thing about God, is that when he saw that there was no way for us to reach him, he reached down to us. When he looked down and he saw our borders and saw that our borders could never reach his borders, he expanded his borders to reach us. God interceded on our behalf. Isaiah 59, 16 says, and he saw, who is he? This is a messianic passage. This is about God. And God saw that there was no one. And he was amazed that there was not one to paga, to intercede. Then his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness was upheld. This is a messianic passage, meaning this is a foreshadowing of what God is going to do through the Christ, through Messiah, through Jesus. And I think that this brings a deeper meaning to that old chorus that we used to sing. God will make a way, right? when there seems to be no way. He reaches down, he expands his border, he intercedes on our behalf. Isaiah 53, the entire chapter is a messianic chapter. Many of you are familiar with it. We've preached and teached on this, right? We are like sheep, led astray, headed to the slaughter. He took on our sins, our iniquities. By his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, you guys tracking with me a little bit, right? The very last verse in Isaiah 53, 12, says, therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors, and he pagad for the transgressors. Now, I all want you to hear me and listen to me and then allow me to explain what I'm about ready to say. Intercession is not a prayer. Intercession is a work. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Jesus didn't make a prayer for us. He did a work for us. Intercession is not a prayer. It is a work. But you can pray a prayer of intercession. Let me explain. Can you pray a prayer of faith, right? The Bible actually instructs us to pray a prayer of faith. James chapter five says, if anyone is sick among you, bring them before the elders and offer a prayer of faith, and they'll be healed, right? So we see that we are to pray a prayer of faith, but is faith a prayer? No, faith is trust put in action, right? Faith is a work. It's something that we do. James says, if your faith has no deeds, then it is dead. Faith is an action, and we can pray a prayer of faith. So in the same way that we can do that, we can pray a prayer of intercession because of the work that Christ Jesus did. He offered a work 
of intercession. He built a bridge so that man could meet with God. He brought together two parties. He brought God and man together. Jesus is our intercessor. He is a mediator. He is an advocate. He, now excuse me, I'm going to say a naughty word, is a lawyer. Okay, don't take offense if you're a lawyer. And also, if you're saying, why do you say lawyer funny? I say it right. Do you go to a lawyer firm or do you go to a law firm? Okay, if you're from the South, it's a lawyer, right? The point is this. Christ did the work of intercession. And this is powerful. Jesus interceded for us in this way in that he perfectly represented the Father to all mankind. Jesus perfectly represented the Father to all mankind. And, and he did this when he stepped down from heaven. He put on flesh. He became a man, and he represented the Father to all mankind. He said, if you want to know the Father, take a look at me. And he perfectly represents the Father to all of mankind. But he not only represents God to man, he is now representing mankind perfectly to the Father. He goes before the throne of God representing me. He goes before the throne of God representing you. I want you to hear me this morning. The only reason that I can have a relationship with the Father is because Jesus has brought us together through the work of the cross. He has joined two parties together through the work of the cross. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, He um, or God made Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us, so that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, when God looks at us, instead of seeing our sins, he sees Christ's holiness, and therefore we are able to meet with God. Because in Hebrews 12, it says that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. God interceded on our behalf. The context, the language, and the continuity of all scriptures all point to Jesus interceding on our behalf, bringing two parties together, man and God. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our mediator. He is bringing us together. Ephesians 2.18 says, for through him, okay, through who? Through Christ, we both, who is both in this context? It's talking about Jews and the Gentiles. So through Christ, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Jesus Christ is continually interceding. He is continually bringing together. He is continually building a bridge between sinful humanity and a holy God. I am so thankful this morning that Jesus Christ is interceding. The second thing I want you to see is that Holy Spirit is interceding. Holy Spirit, the person Holy Spirit is interceding. Take a look in our main text today, Romans chapter 8, we're going to back up to verses 26 and 27. It says this, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray. Anybody ever been in that situation? Like, I don't even know what to pray. We're like dumb sheep. We just don't know what to pray. Right? We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Holy Spirit is doing the same thing that Jesus is doing. He is helping us pray so that our will would intersect, would join up, would meet together with God's will. When we don't know what we ought to pray, he intercedes. He comes along in this partnership and helps us. And this is made possible, why? All because Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to do this for us. So now we have Jesus interceding, but now the Holy Spirit is also interceding. Now every night I can, I try to lay down my kids, um, and we, we pray, and we sing a song, and then I have them say a prayer. Anybody, parents, like have the same routine, like you tuck them into bed and everything? Um, 
And, and so as I'm laying them in, I'll, I'll, I'll pray, and then I'll say, I, I want you to pray, Sam. I want you to pray, Paisley. I want you to pray, Essie. And occasionally, one of our kids will say, well, I don't know what to pray, Daddy. Anybody ever had that happen laying down? I, I don't know what to pray. And so I get the opportunity to lead them in a prayer, and I just begin to lead them in praying. I say, you know, Jesus, come into my heart. Save me from myself. Save me from my selfishness and my greed. Help me to have patience. Help me have eyes to see my sister and my brother in a loving way and to reach my classmates. And I begin to lead them in this prayer. Now, what I'm doing in that moment is when they don't know what to pray, I'm helping their will align with what I know is God's will and part of God's written will for his life, right? And and in the same way, the Spirit does that for us. He comes in, and we don't know what to pray, but he knows the will of the Father, and he knows what we should be praying, so he leads us in those prayers. Maybe it's played out like this. Have you ever prayed for someone, and all of a sudden you're you're praying and you're thinking, man, where is this coming from? You know, like this, this, I'm praying very specific things through me. That's the Holy Spirit interceding. And there have been times where I feel like as if the Lord is just praying through me in, in a, uh, a powerful way. Can we get the keys unmuted? In a powerful way. And I, I get done with the prayer and that person just says, I, I feel like that prayer just hit the nail on the head. Just absolutely hit the nail on the head. Has anybody ever received a prayer? Someone's praying over them and it's like they read your mail that morning. Like they knew exactly what was going on. You've received that. Has anybody ever prayed that way? And you're like, I don't know what I'm saying right now. This could be Kool-Aid, you know, or whatever. But I think it's the Spirit moving in that. Anybody experience? That's the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf. I don't have time to talk about praying in a spiritual language, but there are times where I have no clue what to pray. I have no idea. I remember one time in particular, um, my wife was pregnant with our first kid and she was about six months pregnant. And I think it was September-ish time. And we were over in our student campus in the gym. We were at a fundraiser. I think it was Savannah's Hope. And uh, she just like passes out, hits her head on the the cement wall and like starts like, like doing this weird thing. And I kind of like catch her and and put her in my lap. And I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what to say. I just instinctively just began to pray in the spirit because at that point I was at a loss for words. So I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there praying for her in the spirit. And, and, uh, Someone else calls, you know, paramedics or 911 and ambulance comes and she at that point is alert and standing up and talking. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm no, no big deal. I'm like, sweetheart, we're getting you checked out. You're, you're holding my son. You're six months pregnant. We're getting you checked out. She gets checked out in the back of the, the ambulance and everything is just fine. Couldn't figure out what it was. Fluke deal. Now, could that have just been coincidence and she just passed out? Or do you think that was the Holy Spirit interceding, knowing the perfect will of God in heaven and aligning my prayers with his? I personally believe it's that. If you remember at the beginning of my message, one of the first things I shared with you is that I believe we are all called to intercessory prayer. Now, intercession is a beautiful partnership we are called to, but it's made possible only because of Jesus Christ. And it's brought to completion only through the Holy Spirit. We're called in this partnership to intercede, but only because of what Jesus has done and only through what the Holy Spirit is doing. You guys understand that? It's this beautiful partnership. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Now, this just backs up what I was just saying. If intercession is a prayer, then why would he list prayers and then intercession? Right? Backs up what I'm saying. My final point is this. 
we should be interceding. We should be a people that intercedes on the behalf of others. Intercessory prayer has been seen as this long prayer. And sure, it can be that way. There's nothing wrong with hammering heaven and petitioning and begging and just crying out before God. But the duration of a prayer doesn't have much to do with intercessory prayer. A prayer of intercession is the bridge between the person you're praying for and God. And when we understand that, it begins to change our perspective of how we are intercessors. It is the bridge between God and the person you are praying for. You become the mediator. You are interceding. You are advocating. You are bringing together. You are praying that there would be an intersection of will. How many by a show of hands would say, I had uh, someone praying for me in my life and I don't believe that I would be here today if they weren't praying for me, right? Maybe a mom, maybe a grandparent, maybe a friend, a coworker. Prayer matters. And if we really want to see a genuine move of God, then we better step it up and begin to intercede on behalf of those who have yet to accept Christ. And I believe right now the Spirit of God is speaking to many of you and you know there's someone in your heart that you are supposed to pick up that mantle, that you are supposed to, to, to be the prayer warrior. Listen, grandma's only lived so long. Grandma Georgine, that's what I call her because that's what she is to me. She's 99, she's about ready to go to heaven. She's praying for a lot of people. Who's gonna pick up those prayers? We need to step it up. We are in partnership. But intercessory prayers are for more than just those who don't know God. Maybe your child is a believer. Maybe your spouse is a believer. Intercessory prayer could be as simple of a prayer that would seek to align their will with God's will. It could be as simple as this. God, would you reveal to my friend Jared what his next steps are? Allow him to hear your voice and to know your will. Amen. That's a prayer of intercession. That's a prayer of bringing God and my friend together. It's as simple as that. Now, it could be much longer. That's great. If you have the ability to sit before the Lord for three hours, more power to you. But Paul talks about praying continuously. You know, my wife is someone who uh, does not have... um, the endurance to just go on and on and on and on in prayer, right? Um, any, anybody else kind of relate with that? Like you're just like, let's just get to the point, right? But my wife is constantly in prayer through the Holy Spirit throughout her day. She's a stay-at-home mom. I think stay-at-home moms deserve tons and tons of money from the government, right? Tons and money, because that is the hardest, maybe not from the government, but tons and tons of rewards in heaven, because that is the hardest, the hardest job. You don't get to talk to other adults. You've got someone that's constantly needing, pulling at the hem of your garment, just be like, man, I need you, I need that, mom, 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 mom. It's exhausting. I, I could not do it. But my wife, through the mundane activities of staying at home with our three children, hears from the Lord and as she's chopping onions preparing for fajitas at night as she's running our kids around playing taxi cab and and as she's interacting with our kids and doing you know sensory lessons and teaching and all these different things she's hearing from the Lord and I know that she is also interceding in those moments She's interceding for my family. She's interceding for my kids. She's interceding for me, for our friends, for lost loved ones, for neighbors, whoever it might be. Intercessory prayer doesn't have to mean an hour, two hours, three hours. It just means that you are praying the will of God. Thy kingdom come here on earth as in heaven. I hope this morning that you have learned a little, but... If that's all that happens, then shame on me. If we want to see a move of God, 
If you want to see a move of God, we must be a people committed to prayer. Would you stand with me? This is my challenge for you. I'm asking that everyone would commit to interceding for one person in their life for one month. February 1st is on Tuesday. So we even get the shortest month of the year for this challenge. Would you commit to interceding for someone that God is impressing on your heart right now? Maybe it's for healing, maybe it's for direction, maybe it's for salvation. Would you commit to interceding for one month, every single day? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? God, I pray this morning that you would give us a desire and the ability and the endurance and the discipline to pray prayers of intercession over our lost sons, our lost daughters, our lost spouse, friends, former best friends, God, our neighbors, our coworkers, God, place in us an urgency to see that prayers really do matter. Prayers really can move mountains. Prayers really can affect someone's will aligning with your will, Lord. So God, place that desire and birth it in our spirit. We ask this. Now with every eye closed and head bowed, if there's someone here this morning that say, I need to have an intersection. I need God to intercede on my behalf. And you say, I've never asked Jesus into my life where my ways merge with his, where my wills merge with his. And you'd say, I need to surrender this morning. Would you just raise your hand? I wanna pray for you with every eye closed and head bowed. Is there anyone here that would say, Pastor Austin, I'm asking God. Yes, I see you in the back, sir you just repeat this prayer in your heart after me? Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I acknowledge that you are Lord, that you are Savior. I acknowledge that you know everything. And so I submit my ways. I submit my life to you. Help me to know your truth. Help me to know your spirit. Save me and forgive me of my sin and place my feet on a path of righteousness this morning. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for the work of the cross. I thank you that you've sent your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to help me, to encourage me in Jesus' name, amen. Now keep with your eyes closed. Just right now, ask yourself, who are you interceding for this month? Speak to us, Lord. Who are you going to intercede for? And now ask yourself, Lord, give me a plan of how I'm going to intercede for them. For some of you, it might be setting setting an alarm at an obscure time, 7.33, I need to pray for Bill. 7.31, I need to pray for my daughter, my son. How are you going to ensure that you are a person who prays prayers of intercession? So Lord, for every person represented in our hearts and our minds right now, I pray salvation would come and you'd reach down from heaven, that you'd expand your borders. I pray that wisdom would begin to be poured out on your people and we pray that healing would flow from heaven. We'd see glimpses of heaven. For those who are lost and needing direction, we pray your will be done on earth as in heaven. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen, amen. Do you know why we pray in the name of Jesus? Well, he does say, you know, ask these things in my name and it will be given, but I also believe it's because it's through Jesus that we have access to the Father. May God encourage you and bless you this morning. Thank you for showing up. I'll tell you this before you go. There's a lot of faces out here that I don't see on Sunday nights, and I'm not trying to shame anyone. I'm not trying to guilt anyone, but... If you want something a little bit special, come back tonight because there's 
more worship. There's a different sermon. There's more time in God. God has just begun to fill your cup. Continue to give that. And let's see a mighty move of God. Let's come together, lift our voices, lift our hands. Let's praise him uh, tonight. So come back tonight here, Pastor Jeff, 6 p.m. Thanks for joining. God bless you as you go. We'll see you.